Hi, welcome to this video. Uh, my name is Herbert Saro. I work at the University of Washington in Seattle. And I remember at uh, an IMAG meeting last year in Washington, D.C., somebody asked how to create an SPML model. And I thought <coughs> I could use this opportunity to produce a video to show that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show three tools. Um, Tellurium, which is a Python tool, which is an out tool. Copasi by Pedro Mendes and Cell Designer. So those are the three tools I'm going to show, and as you'll see, they are quite different tools in terms of how a user interaction. So first of all, let's do the Python one. So this is uh, just Python. Those of you who know Python will recognize this simple little, little statement. So I'm just printing a sum of two numbers. So what we have there is a Python console. It's an IPython console to be precise. On the left-hand side, I have an editor, and this is where I'll put my model. Now uh, this, this whole thing here is generated automatically when I start a new project, so um, you won't have to type this. What's important is this little bit here between the two between the three quotation marks. In here you will enter your model. And let me just start by typing something and I'll explain what I've done. So what I've done here is I've actually uh, typed up a chemical reaction, description of a chemical reaction, where we have a species X0 being transformed into a species S1. And this is the rate law. So rate constant K1 times the concentration of X0. Now I can type as many lines as I like here, as many lines as I like. It can be as complicated as you want. Uh, but here we're only going to put in three lines corresponding to the three reactions. Just remember not to make a mistake. Uh, K3, I've got three rate constants. And there we have it. Okay, so those are my three reactions. Next thing I'll do is just um, put some values to the rate constants. These are just uh, random. I'm just making them up. Um, there we go. I just made up rate constants. And I'll set an initial condition for x0 to be 10. And that's the model. The only other thing that's left to do is to ask you to do a simulation. So I'll do that. Simulate. Tell you what this means. This means, so first of all, I should tell you what R is. So R is this thing that comes back from this. Here it is there. Right? So this load A loads the model and then returns the model as a variable R. And I can do all sorts of things with R. I'm just going to simulate it and plot it. <coughs> so the simulate takes three arguments, start time, end time, number of points. Now the only other thing I have to do is plot it. And that's it, plot it. So now I just need to run this model, and I can do that by going to the uh, toolbar at the top here. If you look up here, you see there's a green button. I press the green button, and as you can see, I get a plot. Four plots corresponding to the four species. X-axis is time, Y-axis is concentration. Now remember in the uh, last, in the PowerPoint, I said I wanted X0 and X3 to be fixed. So they don't change. You can see here x0 is declining exponentially. I don't want that to happen. I want to fix it. And by fi to fix it, I just have to put a dollar in front of x0, x3. If I now run it, I get a completely different plot. And you can see these seem to be producing this, um, seem to be reaching a steady state, s1 and s2. There's no x0 and x3 because they're not plotted because they're fixed. So there's no point. So that's my simulation. Now the only other thing to tell you is how do I get hold of the SPML? Well, I just type, uh, let me type it up here so you can see it more clearly. Um, it's print get SPML. If I do that, you can see that's the SPML. All right. So I can save that to a file. I could load it into another application and I can then share models. So that's how we do it with the Python tool. The other tool I want to show you is Copasi uh, by Pedro Mendes and his co-workers. Here we have here. So now this is a completely different kind of tool, user interface. It's a, it's a GUI interface. There's no scripting. It's uh, all buttons and drop-down lists and things like that. So let's um, build a model for that. So to do that, I open up model here, open up biochemical, select species, and I then enter the names of my species here. So it's X0, uh, S, whoops, X0, S1, S2, whoops, S1, S2, and, and X3. So those are my three species. Here, I'm going to set up the initial concentrations as 10, so I had before, 0, 0, 0, 
and those are my four species. Next thing to do is to add some reactions. So here's one, and here it is similar to the Python tool. I actually use a sort of simple syntax here um, for reaction X0 to S1, and the next one, S, oops, S1 to S2 and S2 to X3. So those are the three reactions. It's also put in mass action for me automatically. I'll select now one reaction at a time to set up the rate constants. And what are the rate constants? I'll use the same ones I have in the Python tool. So that's 0.45 on that one, and 0.78 on the third one, and the third one, and it's 1.2. So I set up the rate constants too. So I'm done there. Next thing is go to tasks, pick time course, and now I can set up the duration, which is 10. So 10, the number of intervals, is roughly equivalent to the number of time points, which is already at 100, so that's okay. I have to select uh, the output assistance, which out, output assistant, which tells me uh, what to plot. In this case, concentrations. I select that, and then I run. It plots on my other computer, so there it is, and you can see that's the same as what we got before. <coughs> right now, then the other thing to do, as I said, is I want to fix x0 and x3. To do that, I go back to species, open that up, select each one in turn, go to the simulation type, pick fixed, x3, pick fixed, and there they are fixed. Go back to my time course, run, uh, click the run button again at the bottom, and here we are. I get my new plot. Um, I'll remove x3 from here and x0 because I don't want to see those, and that's what I had before. So that's the uh, Copasi example. The only other thing to say is how do I get the SVML? Well, I select export from file. Okay, so that's Copasi. Next is uh, Cell Designer. So here's Cell Designer. So this again is a completely different uh, Tool. This is a GUI tool. This is a graphical uh, network design tool. So I have a canvas here. So first thing I'll do is type new. I got a new one, so I get a new canvas. I pick species here, select small molecule here, and drop a small molecule and give it a name, which is going to be X0. Drop another small molecule, S1. Drop another small molecule, S2. Drop another small molecule, X3. Right, and I can rearrange these because it's now a picture. Uh, next thing to do is select reactions. Pick a reaction. Okay, you've got many choices, but I'll pick state transition. Hover over it. Select the anchor. And then select the destination anchor. Do it again. And do it again. There you go. So now I've got the uh, my, my reactions. Finally, now one thing I should do here is set up the initial uh, concentration for X0. If I select it, you see these uh, all these tabs on here. Pick the species one, and along here you'll see initial condition, initial quantity. I'll set that to 10, the others are 0. And the final thing to do is to set the uh, rate law. That's over near the screen, bring it over. Pick mass, mass action kinetics. This is where I enter it. What was the value? It was, oops, it was... 0.45. Okay, date done. Next reaction, rate law, mass action, what was it? It was 0.78. Okay, date done. Next, final one, any reaction, mass action, what was it? It was 0.2. Okay, date closed, and that's it, we're done. So to do a simulation, we go to simulation, get the control panel up. Oh, it wants me to save the file, of course. Cell designer test, I'll call it, done that. Brings up that, here we go. Um, time end is should be 10, so get rid of that zero. And number of points is 100, we're done. And then down here we have execute, execute that, and we get the simulation. All right, no problem there. Uh, the only other thing I have to do, oops, let me close this. The only thing we have to do is change the X0 and X3 to fixed species. I do that by down again, uh, down here in this little uh, spreadsheet. I look for BC, which stands for boundary condition. Double click, squeeze over here, set that to true, boundary condition, update, close, D, 
give you x3, up, up true, update close, and then rerun the simulation, and then we'll save the game, see the test, voila, print up the panel, set the panel in QSL, and then hit the execute button, and I get, and that's what I got before. Okay. Um, how do I create SPML? Um, well, I have a, there's an export function here, so you can export pure SPML. Uh, you can pick any of these, well, preferably level two. Um, I think level two version four is a good one, and we'll create the XML. Then I can load that XML into Copasi or into my Python tool or whatever. The last tool I want to show you is this our own tool, which is Pathway Designer, which is also a visual design tool. What's important here are these buttons here. This one let me, lets me drop nodes. Uh, let me change the nodes to x0, s1, s2, x3. So I've got those nodes there. So here they are. Um, reactions, I pick a uni, uni molecular reaction. I just click and click and click and click and click and click. I get those. Um, double click, I forgot to set the initial concentrations for x0, all the others are 0. Double click to bring up the <coughs> rate law editor. I need to set the rate constant to point, point 0.45. There. And this one goes to 0.78. 0.78. This one, the final one, goes to 1.2. Set the reaction, 1.2, and we're done. Uh, now to run, I go time course, uh, viewer. Uh, time end is 10, so I'm OK. Run that, and then you get the same thing as I had before. Right. Now the other thing I want to do, of course, is to fix x0. So I do that from here. Fix x3, do that from here. Bring up the time course again, do the graphical one, and run, and you can see, um, oops, I got that simulation. So that's exactly the same. And to export, I can just save as, save as level two, okay? All right, so I can save the model as SPML. Uh, uh, either pure form, pure form or the other form will do. All right, so I've shown you four, four different, four different applications uh, that allow you to create models, and save the, run the simulations and then save the models in SPML. Each of them is compatible with each other in, in terms of, in, in respect to the fact that each of them can load SPML from every, from each other. So you're not stuck with one tool. If you don't like one tool, you can move to another tool. If one tool dies because it's not maintained anymore, you still got the other tools you can use. And there are a lot of SPML based tools you can use as well. Finally, I'll show you this one. If you really, uh, don't want to use any of these tools, but you still want to use SPML, but you'd rather do your simulations in MATLAB, you can always export, in our tool, you can always export the um, you can always export the model uh, as MATLAB. Um, so you just need to give it a file name model.m and uh, it's actually exported in MATLAB. I can uh, read that file. Let me see, I'll show you. TE read, read from file. Let's get that back. Like so. Oops. Oh, one thing I have to do import Tellurian. Register. You'll see it's here. Is here's the model there. Here. Okay, so that's the model exported. Okay, that's all I have to say. Um, thank you very much for listening. Bye now.